Hey guys, uh, so welcome to another video. Um, what we're going to do today are induction examples. Um, there's not too many, um, but I still want to show you how it works. And specifically, what I really want to focus on is not just the magnitude of some of the stuff, but also the direction, because that's the stuff that will give you problems. So this is the first example here, and it is a square loop of wire of side um, uh, L equals 5 centimeters is in a uniform magnetic field, V equals 0.16 tesla. We want to know what is the flux in the loop when B is perpendicular, when B makes an angle of 30 degrees, and then the magnitude of the average current in the loop if it has resistance of that, and it's rotated from position B to position A in that much time. So um, for this type of problem, Right here, you actually don't need to draw it, but if you want a visual, it would probably look something like this. Uh, and I'm kind of drawing it off to the side because if you were to look at, look at this from the, the actual side, it would just be a line. Um, but it would kind of just look like this for part A, where this is perpendicular to it, right? So this is going to be 90 degrees. That B makes with the, uh, with the surface, okay? So when we're doing, uh, when we're solving for this, right? So we just want the flux in the loop. And the flux is equal to, the magnetic flux is equal to BA cosine theta, where theta was the that angle between um, what the vector field makes and the surface area. So uh, we're basically just going to end up plugging in numbers here. Since this was 90 degrees, Cosine of 90 degrees was just 1. So we don't have to actually worry about that. So we need B and A. Okay, B, we're just straight given. 0.16 Tesla. Cool. A is a little bit of a challenge for us. I mean, it's not spoon-fed to us, but we still need to figure it out. Uh, they give us a side, and they tell us it's a square loop. So the area of a square, right, is equal to uh, two sides multiplied by each other. Should be the length times the length, which is like, you know, L squared, right? Um, or you could just say the length times the width, but they're the same. Um, so this would be the five centimeters squared. But there's an issue because this is centimeters, right? Um, typically, you want everything in meters. You want everything in Tesla. Um, and oftentimes, you're going to be given this stuff in centimeters just to throw you off. So um, what's it five centimeters? Yeah, what's five centimeters? So uh, five centimeter in meters is going to be 0 0.05 meter, right? Because centimeter, you move it over twice. One, two. Um, and the area then is going to be 0 0.05 meter squared. Okay. And that area, I believe, if I'm stealing this right, is going to be 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meter squared. So now all we need to do is just kind of plug that in. So we've got our numbers, B, which was the 0.16 Tesla. We've got our A right there, which is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. Um, and then our cosine of 90 was just 1. So flux will give us units of Tesla meters squared. Um, and that's because it's the amount of B field going through a surface area like that. Um, and this number actually ends up being 4 times 10 to the minus 4 tesla meter squared. Okay. Um, so it's just kind of plugging in. It's not super complicated. Um, but let's look at part B. It makes an angle of 30 degrees. So now what we need to do, we need to do part B. Um, and basically it's going to be the same thing. Except now we have um, 30 degrees there. So cosine of 30 is actually root 3 over 2. Um, if you're plugging that in, this is cosine of 30 degrees. Unfortunately, it's not cosine of 60, which would just be 1 half. Um, so you can't really do it in your head. You need a calculator. Um, but if you plug this all in, you get 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4 tesla meters squared. Um, one thing I should just mention is this can also be rewritten as WB 
um, which stands for Weber, um, which is the unit of flux, actually. Um, so either one works here. You can write Tesla meter squared or a Weber. Um, just a, you know, units bundled together like we usually do. Um, okay, part C. So part C is actually kind of a challenge. Um, and we're looking for the magnitude of the average current in the loop um, current in the loop uh, if it has that resistance and it's from position B to position A. So if you, if you remember this equation, right? V equals IR. Okay. So what we can do here is if you remember um, from the previous lecture that a changing magnetic field um, generates a current or a changing flux generates a current, right? Um, and so that gives us an EMF, right? So EMF, which is roughly the same thing as the voltage, is this. Okay, so we can rewrite Ohm's law like this, and then if we want to solve for current, we can use this. We're given R. We're given the resistance right here. It's 0.012 ohms. What we're not given is the EMF. Okay, so the EMF we need to calculate. And if you remember, you can get EMF okay, from the changing, oops, I can't do that right, from the changing flux. Okay. Um, and this would be the magnitude of the EMF. Um, getting rid of the negative because we're not really concerned with direction. We're, we just want the current value. Um, it just says, what is the magnitude of the average current? Um, so what we're going to end up getting then is we kind of just plug in the change in flux from position B to position A. Okay. And so if you look, you had 4 times 10 to the minus 4 and 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4. So all we really need to do is subtract the two. So we do for the change in the flux, right? Because the change in flux in that one times change in flux in the other one. And I'll use Weber. It's easier to write, I guess, than Tesla meter square, maybe. Um, and then the change in the time. So now we need the time that this rotation takes place. Uh, and that is 0.14 seconds. And then we get the math on this. And this will give us our answer in volts. So 3.6 times 10 to the minus 4 volts. Um, so a Weber per second or a Tesla meter squared per second is a volt. Um, so now all we need, so we've got this guy. So now we need the current. So the current is just E over R, which is 3.6 times 10 to the minus 4 volts over um, 0 0.012 ohms, which gives us a current of volts per ohms. It's actually going to give us to us in milliamps because we've got a very small amount. Um, but you can write this as uh, 0.03 amps, or you can write this as, if you move this over, 30 milliamps, which is probably the preferred method. It's annoying to write that. Um, but yeah, so that's how you do those sorts of problems. Okay. Um, you actually, in this problem, because you're not told the direction of rotation of the loop, you can't figure out the... Um, and you're not told the direction. You can't actually, um, the direction of the B field, you can't actually even figure out the direction of the loop, whether it's clockwise or counter, or direction of the current in this problem, because you, you're not told any initial directions. Um, so we actually can't do that. But we will do that in the next example. Okay, But this is the first one, and um, like I said, you pretty much just, for finding flux, you just plug in VA cosine beta, um, where B is the field, a is the area uh, that the, the field is going through. Um, and then cosine of the angle between B and A. 
and then if you want to figure out the average induced current, you figure out the change in those, and you divide by the time it takes. Okay, um, and then you have to have a resistance to know the. Um, you have to have a resistance to know the uh, current for that. So, hope that's somewhat helpful. Um, the next one we're going to do is figuring out direction of current. So. These will be um, so we're not there's not really numbers here, but here's the setup. So let's just do uh, let's just do number one, and it's just going to be a picture, and I'll show you um, what's going on. So here's the setup. You've got a magnetic field that looks like this, and you've got a, oops, oh my god, why can I not draw a circle? Okay, so you've got a loop that's leaving in this direction, so you've got a loop that's leaving the field. Okay, so to figure out direction, there's going to be one of two directions. It's either going to be clockwise, oops. So current will be clockwise or counterclockwise. And if you remember what Lenz's law says, it says that the induced current will produce a field that's in the same direction as the field already there if it's reducing the flux. Okay, so same if it's reducing the flux, opposite if it's increasing the flux. So what's happening in this example is, number one, what you need to do, so how to do this, is answer this, is flux decreasing? And in this, yes. Flux is decreasing because the loop is leaving the field, so the area where the field goes through the loop is getting smaller. So the flux is decreasing. So, I will be in direction that produces oops, a field, a B field. So the current will be in the direction that produces the B field in the same direction or the same, produce the B field in the same, yeah, Oops. in the same direction as the already established field. Okay? So, the already established field is out of the page. So, to get out of the page, what I want you to do is your thumb, so you're using this one where you just have thumb, and then the curl of the hands. So, and do this with me, look at the page. You want to point your inner fingers towards the center of the loop, and you want to get them to come out. So, for that to happen, my thumb points up. Because my point my thumb points up to produce a field in the same direction. Current is counterclockwise. Okay? So make sure you do that and you understand that. Okay? Let's look at number two. So number two, we have a loop. And what's going on is the loop is going to get smaller and the field inside is into the page. So A is decreasing, flux decreases, same direction as established field. 
And if you do that, you're going to point your thumb down to go into the into the page. Okay. So I is clockwise in this example. If the loop had been getting bigger, it would have been counterclockwise. Let's look at another example on how this can be done, how this can be drawn. So we've got a loop. We've got the south end of a magnet. Now, a magnet's, um, a magnet's field goes from south to north. So the first step is figuring out, for this type of example, where it's not um, where it's not given to you, it's given to you in kind of like a hidden way. In this case, it's just a bar magnet. B field is into the page because field goes from south to north, right? So redraw it. And it looks like this. OK. So now what you've got is you've got a, um, um, you've got a magnet that's coming into it. OK. So is coming into the loop with and into the page field. Because that is the case, it is increasing flux. So the flux is increasing. That means the current needs to produce an opposite field. So it's currently into it, which means if we're doing the fingers into the page, okay, that produces a, a field that's down as well. So that would be the same direction. So what we need to do is flip up and curl out of the page opposite field that's being produced, which would be counterclockwise. So to do that, your thumb has to point up counterclockwise current produced. Okay. Um, let's look at another one. What is this? This is uh, number four. Here's a good one. We've got a bar magnet. It's moving like this. Now, in this example, our field is to the right, okay? And our loop is also right here. Now, if you remember the equation, BA cosine of theta, right? But here, there's actually no angle at all between the field and the loop. The loop's not rotated at all. It's not into the page. Um, and so there's no perpendicularness at all. There's no amount of flux no, or no, yeah, no amount of flux through the loop. So there, there's no field going into the loop. Um, so here, cosine of theta is actually cosine of zero degrees, so it's zero. No current produced, okay, because there's no flux. So if there's no flux, there's no change in flux. Okay. Um, even if it's moving past the loop, there's still nothing produced. Okay. So you can have these types of examples as well. Um, the final one is kind of a tricky one. You've got a loop, and it's rotating around this axis. 
and your field is to the left. Okay, so when the loop first starts, it's parallel to the field, so there's no flux, but then it starts to rotate, and then it becomes, you know, fully perpendicular. Then as it rotates more, it becomes parallel again. So during the first half of rotation, the amount of flux going through the loop increases. So during first half of rotation, flux increases. During second half, it decreases. It's going back down again, going back down to zero. So it's going up to 90 degrees, then it's going back down. Um, so in the first part, the part that increases, so increasing part, it should produce a field that's opposite. And so to produce an opposite field, it would be into the loop. So it would have to be clockwise, okay? And you want to view it from the part of the loop that's farther away from you, okay? So clockwise, current. The decreasing part would then be opposite. It would be counterclockwise. And, and you're thinking about this, um, so it needs to produce something that's the same direction. And so, yeah, it has to be counterclockwise in the second part. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, with this, again, just be good with the right-hand rule. Um, and these are the types of examples you'll see on, like, an exam or, you know, whatever. Okay. Um, there's one final example here. Let me just get it for you. And this is the moving rod system I talked about. Um, the moving rod, so this is the system, and this would be accompanied by, so let me draw this. This is the setup. Um, and I believe... In this example, it's out. So it's going from here to here. So it's moving from one place to the other. Um, and we want to know, so the moving rod is 12 centimeters long. So L is right here. It says it's 12 centimeters, which is also 0.12 meters. We can just do that conversion now. Um, and it's pulled at a speed of, so V equals 0.18 meters per second, just doing the conversion now. Um, and if the magnetic field is 0.8 Tesla, calculate the EMF and the current direction, uh, and the current develop, direction of current. So let's do the EMF first. So EMF, we have this equation, BLV. We just kind of plug it in. Okay, 0.8 Tesla uh, is B. L, they told us, was 0.12. And then our V is 0.18 meters per second. And if you do the math on that, you get um, 1.73 times 10 to the minus 2 volts. Um, but now we need direction, okay? 
So is this going to be uh, clockwise or counterclockwise? So let's look at this. We are, so now direction, we're looking at this, and are we increasing the flux going through the system or decreasing it? Well, as we pull away more magnetic field, right, because there's magnetic field also over here, right, there's magnetic field everywhere, and as you move it to the right, you're increasing the amount. So we are increasing flux, which means opposite field produced. Okay, so increasing flux, opposite field produced. So our opposite field here would be into the page because we're currently out of the page. Okay, so we go to the bar, we point our hand down to get that curl inward to point our uh, fingers towards the center of it and my thumb points down to get my thumb into the page or to get my fingers into the page which is opposite the field right because these guys represent the field direction which means my thumbs pointing down we have a clockwise current developed so clockwise current produced. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it for these examples. Um, yeah. Um, so that's it for induction and magnetism. Um, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.